We had Pete Dunne and Bobby Fish. And, you know, this is Bobby Fish's, like, first big match back. I guess first he had, match back, period. Yeah, he had tricep surgery after, I think he got, like, his arms, his triceps sliced open on the cage or something like that. Yeah, I think so. It was yeah. something crazy. He got surgery, and this is his first match back, and before that he was doing mostly tag matches. So his first singles match back... I mean, well, he hasn't done any match. This is his first match back in over six months. Yes, and it was and a he, singles match. And it was a singles match, but you know, I mean, he yeah, he had, hadn't worked many singles matches in you know before that, but but this was a you know, but he's a he's a great wrestler. I mean, that's the one thing. He's a great wrestler. Pete Dunne never has a bad match. I think it's almost impossible for Pete Dunne to have a bad match just with his style. And um, yeah, I thought that they had a great match. Yeah, they had a very good match. Lots of uh, small digit manipulation and such, and working over the arm by Pete Dunne. And Fish made his big comeback, and finally at the end, Dunne snapped his fingers and uh, hit him with the bitter end, pinned him. And then afterwards, Oni Lorcan jumped in the ring, and he attacked Bobby Fish and beat him up, and then he drapes him across the ring apron and stretches his arm out, and kicks the bad tricep, and uh, so they're setting up Lorkin and Bobby Fish, which at least gives Bobby Fish something to do. Somebody he gives only Lorkin something to do also because Danny Birch is out, so he needs something to do. Yeah, you know, so in a singles thing, so yeah, it's it's something for both of them, and they're both aggressive, good wrestlers. So it's um, it's one of those things. It's like it's um, I don't know how the like the problem with NXT right now is just that. The wrestling is very good, but it's not. The people aren't interested in the guys. I mean, I, I they really think up and down the card. Like they're just, they're just not interested in these characters. Some have been there for too long, and it's just I don't know. Um, I mean, it's like almost like anything. They, they're like one of these. It's like it's like a company right now where it's a good product when I watch it, but there's nothing. There's no matchups that it's get you just excited. very cold. Yes, because there's exactly. so much wrestling between Raw and AEW, and if you're if you're a hardcore fan, you can watch New Japan, New Japan Strong, Ring of Honor, Impact. I mean, you need more than just have good matches. And this show, but they have good, but they have good. I mean, the build for Valor and and uh, Karen Cross was 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 very. It was well done. good, but the problem is we've seen that match with a finish. So it's yep. like it was just a yep. match we've already seen. They can do all they want to build the matchup again, and it's still just a match we've already seen. I don't think one person thought that Finn Balor had any chance of beating Karrion Cross here. So you've got a match that we've already seen with a foregone conclusion. It's like, how excited can you get about this match outside of, I think the match is going to be really good. Okay. And you, you can't... Well, like, I saw, you know what, though? you Because the first match wasn't that great. This match was so much better than the first one. Because, I mean, Karen Cross, this was Karen Cross's first great match. All of his other matches were, they were fine or, you know, just okay. I think one of the things with Karen Cross and, you know, whatever, I, I think Karen Cross, it's like he, he fits their idea of what they want because of his look and he's got you know scarlet's got a good look and he's got a good look and he's intense and and all that but it's like you know sometimes guys fit the thing but they don't draw for whatever reason and i can tell you like i i there's i would look at carrying cross and i watch him and i go you know he should be but i also when i watch him even in the match that he had that he had on tuesday night I don't feel superstar with him. Um, it's like he, 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 he ticks the boxes, but I don't feel it. And that's what it's all about. It's not about ticking boxes. It's about having something that appeals to the people. And it's like in their mind, this is, this is exactly what we want. We finally got a big guy, but nobody gives a shit about big guys today. I mean, that's the reality of it. Maybe they do in the big, in the main roster. If it's, almost or something like that but that's a completely different thing and and and, and i don't know that he would work if i don't he think anyone cares every, that much about almost i don't think he would work if he was used in a main event situation all the time either but um you know i mean it's 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 hard to say what they you know what they want is somebody with a reputation from somewhere else and um they're doing everything they can with cross 
Uh, they, he's got the great ring entrance, but whatever it is, look, it's, it's, you know, the guy on top is supposed to draw, and there you go. There's your answer. He's been on top. It's not like he just got on top. He's been put, you know, he got hurt, but he's been pushed for months. He's undefeated and, you know, been beating everybody and, and everything, and they put the best workers they can against him to make sure that his matches are as good as possible. But, you know, whether it will be a slow thing and eventually he will get over, perhaps. But right now, what we can say is he ain't over. That's the that's the answer. He's not over. Finn Balor um, was certainly a big deal when he started NXT, but it's like he's... I mean, like when I watched Finn Balor, I mean, in this match, and it was over, it was like, you know, I really think he needs to go on Raw or SmackDown. He's great, but it's like... Well, I think the lesson with Finn Balor is the idea of a long-term tweener, it just doesn't work. Well, they did make him a heel, and now he's a babyface without a turn. Well, we think. I mean, he's just hes just a guy. I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to cheer him. I don't know if I'm supposed to boo him. Was I supposed yeah. to cheer him or boo him against Karrion Cross? I have no idea. Oh, he was definitely the babyface against Karrion I mean, Karrion Cross has been positioned as a babyface half the time. Not really. Yeah, he came back and and they positioned him as a babyface, trying to fight for his title again. And I mean, mm, there there's I, not I, a clear I, I, differentiation between some of these characters here, and it's hard to care about him. Finn, Finn Balor worked the whole match as the babyface, so to me, he was the babyface. But but I think Finn Balor needs to go to the main roster. I just think that he's. I mean, I know what he was put there for. He was put there to fight AEW, and that fight's over. And um you know, I mean, he was there to have good matches. He has good matches, but it's just not. It's, it's he served his purpose. Um, you know, if they, I suppose the idea if they start going on the road that you would want a star like him, perhaps that's a, a you know something because they don't like. Here's the one thing: if if NXT goes on the road right now, I don't think that they're drawn well at all. Nothing like they did before the pandemic. Um, I don't feel like anything's you know, the undisputed era were cool. I think that individually perhaps we'll see but you know adam cole's been there for too long i mean that's just the reality of it and kyle we'll see we'll see how kyle does um you know gargano is is entertaining but he's been there forever and you know i mean that's the thing they they you need more um you need more new people at the top i think that's that's probably part of the answer too but i don't know that the the standard is like who's who are those new people um because i guess swerve you know swerve and his group i guess should be in there but you know what if they're going to be there then put them there you know i mean because you need to get some new guys up there at the top i think that's the big problem is pete dunn is like another guy who what i mean he's a great wrestler but um he needs character work something fierce um, and also, he's another one that he's. How many years have we seen Pete Dunn? I mean, we see, but five years, you know. And he's still in NXT, and he outworks everybody. You know, it's like there's got to be. Uh, there's, you know, they have these guys that are so talented, but if they're not gonna like go anywhere, um, you're gonna get bored with them. You know, it's like they they have to move, or you've got to change where they are i mean i think that like the like same thing like with with the nxt uk like tyler bait i mean tyler bait years ago when he first came in everyone was excited to see him you know because he, he worked so great now it's been years he still works great but people have you know they kind of give up on you they give up on guys when after a while you 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 figure out that they're never going anywhere and with like uh you know the goal should be that these guys graduate but the you know, to the main roster, but they've seen that some of these guys, you know, it's like better that they never go to the main roster because they're never going to get a push. Chomp is another one. He's been there for years and years and years, but he's never going to go to the main roster. And so it's like, why invest in these guys? That was the whole thing of NXT originally. You invest in these people, and then they're going to go to the main roster, and they're going to have all these new exciting matches with all the guys in the main roster. And then it happening. They're just wrestling each other in really good matches, but um, that there's no excitement to these characters. So that's the big problem. It is not the, it is the, the problem is absolutely not the ability of these wrestlers because we get they're They're very good in that sense. But um, you know, and again, are they allowed to be themselves? I don't know. It doesn't appear that way. And they got it, you know, 
to get over you've got to figure out a way to be somebody and if they're trying to program you and they've also decided that because of your size that you really you know i mean cross is the one guy they've decided be, th that he can be a big star so they present him as a big star and he's new and it hasn't clicked um but these other guys they've decided they're they're really good wrestlers but they can't be big stars and when you have guys around you know like uh and they're not young guys like if they're young guys it's one thing bobby fish is what 45 years old i mean that was the one thing i'm watching him going like yeah, man he's great this match is good he's like 45 years old and he's in nxt and nxt should not have 45 year old guys even if they're good workers maybe maybe one but then but the guy if they have one he should be like a legend down there you know not bobby fish it's just it's just that they they've got to um they got to freshen this thing up and they've got to you know um i mean the, the thing should be training young guys to be good wrestlers not guys that have been around the indies like even with i mean bronson reed he's new ish he's new er but then he goes and tells you he's been around for 14 years so it's kind of like well how young could he be you know it's it's the one of the big keys has always been in wrestling when it comes to um you know hot territories you know big things it's most of the time it's a young guy or a series of young guys in their early to mid 20s who may not be ready but they have something going for them whether they could talk or whether they got a good look or whatever and you just push the hell out of those guys and they're new and they're fresh and it's something different not guys who've been on tv for years and years and years and years or guys who are not young um and that especially in an nxt inherently nxt needs to be a young group it needs to be and it's it's really not hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.